Hello everybody, welcome back today. Oh my gosh, we are talking about the new Miss South Africa reality show, Crown Chasers. Now I am especially excited for Crown Chasers because I think that this is really going to help us to gauge who will be top three at the end of the day. I definitely think that Crown Chasers is going to help me to narrow down my top 10 to a top five, top five to a top three because this way we're really going to see all of the girls' personalities against each other and how they're vibing with the actual Miss South Africa team, stuff like that, all of the behind scenes with makeup artists, things like that. It's going to be very, very important when it comes to who actually wins, who the organization wants to be working with for the next year. So I am so grateful to the Miss South Africa organization for, you know, blessing us with crown chasers. Now you might be going, you know, if you're like an older Miss South Africa fan, you might be like, this whole Miss South Africa reality show thing sounds very familiar. And that's because there used to be a thing on DSTV, on Mzanzi Magic in particular, called Road to Miss SA, which was like a literal reality show following the Miss SA contestants around. Now, season one started in 2011 and had nine episodes. Season two was in 2012 and I believe had like six episodes only. But season three was in 2014 because obviously you guys know if you watched my Marilyn Ramos video, you guys would know that Miss South Africa went through a bit of a rebrand between 2012 and 2014. So the next one was in 2014 and had 10 whole episodes. But then as far as I could tell, it ended. But now there's a new one and it's not on DSTV. Thank goodness you don't have to pay an arm and a leg a month to be watching Crown Chasers. It's actually for free on the app. And then after it comes out on the app a few day, days later, they do post it on their Miss South Africa YouTube channel as well for all, all of us to watch. Now, sadly, the episodes are only about 10 minutes long, which I would have preferred like 20 minutes at least, maybe 25 or 30 minutes. I mean, the sky is the limit. They could have, they don't have to worry about actual TV time. They could have made it any amount of length. I feel like 10 minutes is just, uh, I just, I'm just getting a taste and then it's being taken away. It's terrible. I must say though, the introduction of Crown Chasers is really, really, really giving like real house vibe, wives type of vibes. You go girl. Like the way from the music to the way they introduce the girls, the girls all have a little something to say, which is basically just taken at random. Like they have Tamsin crying and Oh my gosh, the intro needs work, I will be the first to say, but the whole concept of the show, I really, really like it. Now with episode one, it's all about the girls finding out that they actually made top 10 and there's, you know, their reactions, but then there's also footage of them like video calling their family members to tell them Davies section where she was telling a family member literally made me cry it was such a beautiful moment i love things like this when you when you get to see other people tell their family good news and then everybody's just happy and then everybody's crying tears of joy and then i'm crying tears of joy even though i don't know these people i don't know i just love i just love that and then um also at the end of episode one they were sort of alluding to future drama between the girls and I'm conflicted because look we all love the tea we all love the drama I am not ashamed to say that I would like to see the drama but I'm going to be watching it like this because you know, pageantry already has a bad reputation for bitchiness and cattiness. And, and I know that they have to sort of allude to this drama. I know why they alluded to the drama. Because they want you to come back and watch every single episode. Okay, we're not stupid. We know it's a marketing tactic for crown chases. But 
I don't really want the drama to be as bad as they were alluding it to be, just because, you know, in pageantry, pageantry already has a bad rep for bitchiness and cattiness amongst the girls. But, you know, I'm excited to see what they were talking about nonetheless. So I'm definitely like, um, you know, a bit of a walking juxtaposition. I don't know what to say. Like, a, I want the drama, but I also don't want the drama to be so dramatic that it potentially, you know, makes people think that pageantry is only that. Do you understand what I mean? Then when it came to episode 2, all of the girls were talking about their respective pageant histories, you know, which is very helpful for fans like you and me, um, you know, just to know, okay, what have you actually competed in? Where have you been? Surprisingly, a lot of the girls haven't done anything major like a lot of them only talked about like their high school pageants pageants they did as children i think that's pretty interesting um you know that none of the girls are actually like career pageant queens and then also tamsin and luyanda have talked a bit about their negative experiences online since joining miss south africa which uh, was pretty heartfelt but I especially love from Crown Chasers, I must say, the insights that we are getting from um, Shanae and from Stephanie and from Wagner. Because they're really telling us as fans what the Miss South Africa organization is looking for, everything it entails. And that's what I love. You know, we fans, we don't only care about the final night. This is not what we do. We want to know all of the detail. We want to know as much detail as possible. And I think that Crown Chasers is a great way for the Miss South Africa organization to get their message across to the fan base. Because, you know, from their other social medias, from Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, whatever, they have a very curated thing. But with Crown Chasers, you know, it's much easier for us to see these people, to see Stephanie, to see Wagner, to see uh, Shanae and, you know, empathize with the difficult job that they have at the end of the day and to sort of understand the difficult positions that they are in sometimes and also to understand just the process as a whole and to see what everything goes into it. Now, when it comes to episode three, it was basically just focused on girls who have tried to enter Miss South Africa before, but then, you know, sort of didn't necessarily make it, things like that. And I do think that from here on out, it's going to be very excited. Like, as of right now, as of me recording this video, only three episodes have come out, but they alluded in episode three, the end of episode three, to the makeovers coming up, which, you know, we already know the results of the makeovers. But I'm very excited to see that whole process nonetheless. I'm actually, I'm just excited, you know, to have some true behind the scenes of the Miss South Africa journey. The type of behind the scenes that we love. The free type. So every Monday and Thursday at um, 6.30 in the evening, a new episode of Crown Chasers will be released to the app and then I suppose a few days later to their YouTube channel. Like I said, the episodes are about 10 minutes each, so it shouldn't take up too much of your time. Sadly, I would love them to be longer. I really would. I think maybe some of them would be longer depending on the content. But anyway, guys, that is what Crown Chasers is all about. I'm so freaking excited for Crown Chasers, guys, because... This is really, like I said before, going to help us to see these women's personalities, to see how they speak, to see how they act, to see how they interact, which is even more important. So let me know what you guys think. Have you watched Crown Chasers yet? Let me know what your thoughts are. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you haven't already, please subscribe and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye. Are you congratulating me or are you just doing it just so that you can diss the other Ayanda?